you kind of live in a very interesting part of the market. And I want to start with trucks and engines on trucks. And I'm wondering when we're going to get to the point where we can have 25% or more EVs in trucks and buses, because that would be truly a game changer for decarbonization. Alex, thanks so much for having me, and, and thanks for your question. Trucks and buses are a big component of fuel usage and therefore CO2 generation. And so getting those products down from a carbon point of view is critical to meeting our, our goals, uh, uh, both as a country and of course as a, as a world. And Cummins is dedicated to that topic. And the one thing I would like to say is that all, EVs are an important part of that strategy, but the truth is we can't wait until EVs are cost effective and where there's enough infrastructure, we need to start lowering carbon today. So one of the things that Cummins has been emphasizing is the idea of a path to zero and that in order to meet our climate change goals, we need to start getting on the path today. So we're offering technologies today that reduce climate warming gases right away, CO2, and then we move to hybrids, then we move to electric vehicles, then we move to fuel cells. We keep moving down the carbon producing technologies until we meet zero. But start today, don't wait. Tom, good morning. It's Guy in London. Um, what do you need to hear from the politicians? What do the politicians need to deliver up in Glasgow for that process to happen as you lay it out and maybe for it to be accelerated? Guy, thanks for your question and, and nice to talk with you. I, here's what I would say is that existential crisis of our time, climate change, we all have to be in it. The politicians, the businesses, consumers, we all have to be in it for real. And so what we'd like to see from politicians is a regulatory structure that emphasizes reducing carbon. That, of course, means not only investments in technology, it does mean that, but it also means we have to internalize the externality, which is carbon. That means carbon tax, some kind of cost on carbon. It also means regulations that drive action today. They don't wait until everything is perfect and all electric vehicles are available everywhere mm -hmm. and there's charging infrastructure everywhere. They start now. Um, when you take a look at the future, China seems to be betting quite big on hydrogen fuel cell technology. It feels like the U.S. is betting more just on battery electric. Uh, what does the mix look like? Can we say 2030 or 2050? Yeah, it's, Alex, I think it's a mistake to bet on any single thing. We need all these technologies. The Hydrogen Council, uh, which Cummins is a member of, has done a study that shows that if we have multiple infrastructures, hydrogen and electric vehicles, we actually, it's cheaper to build the infrastructure, it's more robust and likely to produce better results. So our argument here is for the existential crisis of your time, invest in all those technologies. Don't choose today before they're, they're ripe. Get going on all of them. And so I, I do agree that, that, that China and Europe, frankly, have made more investments in hydrogen in the early stage. I think the U.S. has time to catch up, and, and now is the time. That's one of the reasons we supported the Build Back Better program, as there, as there are incentives in there to start building out the hydrogen economy. Tom, do you think this is all going to be inflationary? You know, that, that's hard to say. I, I guess on the one hand, I'd say maybe. On the other hand, it's, again, we all are going to survive or not survive by whether or not we can sustain our planet. So we need to invest in these things. We need to move towards a lower carbon economy. And, and, and there will be shocks along the way. There will be increases in prices. There will be dislocations. I mean, how, how can there not be? Mm -hmm. But we've survived those before. Innovations can get us through that. And, and I believe that, that, that the industry is ready to take this on. We just need to get moving. Well, Tom, th let me ask it in a different way. Um, when we're finally at critical mass here, what's the margin profile for, say, hydrogen battery electric trucks versus traditional ICE uh, vehicles? You know, at, at Cummins, uh, innovation's kind of been at our core for 100 years. The, the, the employees at Cummins, they want to in innovate to solve these problems. Our view is if we do good innovation, we give customers solutions to both their economic and sustainability problems, we'll get paid to do it. If we don't come up with good solutions, we won't. So it's definitely right, by the way, that as the CEO of the company, I need to figure out how we're going to earn margins, how we're going to earn a return, and I worry about that every day. 
But I also believe that if we do a good job on this innovation and if we solve the real problems of today's customers, we will get paid. And we believe that these problems, these the, how to turn an economy from a high carbon economy into a low one is one of those problems. So we are full speed working on it. Do you think there are going to be supply bottlenecks that are going to impede our path towards these targets? Tom, we're suffering at the moment because we simply can't get the chips we need to build the vehicles that we want. Do you see that as a short-term phenomenon? What is going on right now in terms of the supply chains? And how will these supply chains be affected as we make these energy transitions? Yeah, supply chain is definitely a short and even medium term phenomenon, especially with electronics and integrated circuits. And, and I believe there'll be more supply chain dislocations as we move to a world that's going to demand different technologies to solve the world's problems. There's no question about it. But again, I would put that in the scale of things that industry needs to work out, investments need to work out. I, I just want to I want to build a planet that our kids and grandkids can live in there'll be some supply shocks but but again all of us should be focused on the task mm -hmm. at hand which is getting our technologies our regulatory infrastructure moving towards a low carbon economy get moving solve the small problems later solve even the medium sized problems later but get moving now tom before we let you go that's sort of the long term um, issues as we sort of shift here i just want to get your take on the short term supply issues when do you see the chip shortage easing the conversation last week was that maybe we've hit bottom here what do you see from where you sit right now i see a, a, a horde of problems a lot of shortages everywhere and uh, a lot of challenges but you know these are challenges that I, I believe industry can work through we will have to as an industry invest in automotive grade uh, chips and, and and wafers and all the supply chain that supports that we are going to have to invest in 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 building capacity back that we lost during the pandemic. That's going to take some time, but but all of us are committed to it. We, we will do it. Um, I, I wouldn't I don't know if I could call it short term yet uh, because it, I can't quite see the end of it, but we are investing to do it. And I, th I do think the longest lead time is an increased capacity of semiconductors.